Someone on Reddit had asked how to create long notes for ambient music, like notes that might be held for a minute or longer. They had a regular complement of modules, but they didn't know how to achieve that really long note without holding down a key on a physical keyboard. But as usual, Maths has us covered, though you need to do a little self-patching with it. The manual covers something like this, but it doesn't do a very good job of explaining how it works. So this seemed like a good topic for a single patch video. It's really easy to get a long attack decay style envelope. Just crank up the rise and fall times on channels one or four and either cycle it or send in a trigger. But that's not what the OP was asking for. They wanted something that would have a relatively short attack and release, but a long sustain. So to accomplish this, I'm gonna use two techniques I've talked about before. I'm gonna be using the end of rise or end of cycle outputs, which I covered in the original Maths 201 video. And I'm gonna take that output and run it through a slew limiter like I covered in Maths 203. There'll be links to each of those in the description and at the end of the video. For the first part of this recipe, I want to remind you how the end of rise output works. It can really be thought of as a falling signal. As long as channel one is in the falling segment of its cycle, the end of rise signal is going to be high. And that's what we're going to do here. We want to have a long note with a brief gap in between. The long note is going to correspond to when the end of rise signal is high. So we're going to set the fall value quite high. And the gap in between is going to be based on how long the rise segment is. So we'll set the rise segment a little lower. And if we watch it run, that's what we'll see. The end of rise goes high for quite a while, and then goes low for a brief time, and then high again. Conversely, we could have done this on channel four with the end of cycle output that remains high while the rising part of the cycle is rising. In that case, we would have set the rise time quite high and the fall time quite low. I'm using channel one in this case, but you could have done it with channel four, no problem. But that just generates a gate. It jumps from zero volts to 10 volts and then back down again. And we wanted something like a nice smooth envelope. That's where the slew limiting comes in. Slew limiting slows down the transition between voltage levels. So it can take that almost instantaneous jump from zero volts to 10 volts and stretch it out over time, giving us a nice smooth attack or release. And in between, we'll sustain at that 10 volt level. So that's what I'm doing with channel four here. I'm taking the Unity output from channel four and I'm using an attenuator on my VCA. But if you were sending it to a module that didn't have an attenuator, you could take the attenuated version off of maths just as easily. So let's pull it up on the Mordax data to see what's going on. At the top in green is the actual output of channel one as it cycles. It's rising over the course of about five seconds and then falling for about 25 seconds. It could go much longer, you just increase the rise and fall times on the channel, but that would make for a pretty boring video. Next, in blue, is the end of rise signal from channel one. You can see that it's low while the cycle is rising, and then goes high when it's falling. So I've taken that gate output, and I'm running it into the input on channel four, which we're gonna use as a slew limiter. And that's what we're seeing down at the bottom in red. It smoothed out those abrupt changes in voltage. Instead of jumping instantly from zero volts to 10 volts, it takes about one or two seconds to ramp up. And instead of dropping instantly, it takes about three or four seconds to drop. And that gives us our nice long attack sustain release envelope. But that video is just a big jumble of patch cables. So let's look at a diagram. In this first version, I'm assuming that maths is also acting as the clock. So we'll turn on the cycle button. And now the rise time, which is the time that the EOR is going to be low, that's the time between the notes. And the fall time is the length of the note while the gate is high. But if you wanted to clock this externally, you can just use the trigger input. And in this case, the rise time becomes a delay between when the trigger comes in and the note starts. If you don't want a delay, just turn it all the way down. In the end, the important part is that the gate comes out of the end of rise. And that's how I have things set up. Maths is generating my envelope and gate outputs and I have a noise source and a quantizer that will supply the pitch CV. And that's all running through the harmonic shift oscillator. The output from the oscillator is running to the VCA, and so is the envelope coming out of maths. And from there it goes into some reverb because, you know, reverb. But how about that harmonic shift oscillator? The first time I played with it, it was like, look at me, I'm 90s era Autecker. But Talking about the tonal quality of the oscillator, we shouldn't forget that we do still have the original cycling LFO on channel one as well that we can use for something. So let's plug that into the level input on the oscillator. That controls the brightness of the resulting spectrum. 
and you can hear how the brightness changes now over time along with the green trace. Well that about wraps it up for this video. Like I said, it was just a quick one, but I hope you found it useful. And if you did, maybe consider subscribing. Thanks.